Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to use the Macrium Reflect Restore or Recovery feature, just in case you need to recover a system image if your computer is not booting up. So we've done a couple of videos on this product already, um, how to do a file level backup, and then also how to use the clone feature if you want to clone your hard drive to another drive and make it bootable so you could use it to run Windows off of. All right, so this program used to be free, but apparently they decided they didn't want to give it away for free anymore. So now it costs, I think it's about 40 bucks a year or something like that. If you click on purchase, you get a better idea here. So 50 bucks a year for one computer, and you could use the 30-day trial if you want to check it out. All right, so when you go into the interface, you have your backups and your restore options here for creating backups and your existing backups. But for our purposes, we're just going to be going over the recovery options here. So what you want to do first is go to Other Tasks and create Rescue Media. So there are a few options here. You could add an option to the boot menu, which we'll do just to show you how that works. Not really necessary, but it might come in handy if you think you might be using this over and over again. Uh, you could burn it to a CD or DVD if you still have one and create an ISO file. All right, so first we're going to add the boot menu just so you can see how it works here. So we'll just click on Build. And just keep in mind when you add this boot menu, you will see it every time you start your computer, whether or not you're doing any kind of recovery. All right, and then we're going to do the ISO file. And that way, once you make the ISO file, you could burn it to a bootable flash drive using something like Rufus the same way you would do for your Windows installation media. All right, so I already have one made here, but we'll just make another one just for fun here. We'll call this two. So we'll build the ISO file here. So it'll take a couple minutes. Okay, maybe a couple seconds actually. All right, so that's done. So what you would do now is you would burn this ISO file to your flash drive and make it bootable, like I mentioned before. All right, so we'll close that. So we have our recovery media potentially made. And then we also have the Windows boot menu made, so you could use either one of those. All right, so now we need to do our backup here for the recovery. So you want to go to Create Backups here. All right, so we have two options here, Image Selected Disks on this computer, or Create an Image of the Partitions Required to Backup and Restore Windows. These kind of work the same. So if you use this one, you could integrate some file backups that you might have into it and so on. So we're just going to do the simple one here. And then of course, down here, you have your file and folder backups. All right, so we're going to make one of each just to show you the process here. So first we'll make the image backup. All right, so we have our C drive here. That's what we want to do. This is the secondary drive where the backup's going to go. So you want to make sure to uncheck this because you don't want to back up the drive that you're recovering from. All right, so this is an image backup. So let's browse to the folder we're going to use. I have an image backup folder. You could put it wherever you like, name the folder whatever you like. In the backup file name, we'll call this backup image. Okay, so we have our C drive selected here, backing up to our E drive. Then you could do it to a DVD burner as well. And then we have our image name here. We also have some advanced options if you want to change compression levels, file size, protect it with a password, have the image verified, verify your file system, change the prefix, add a comment, and then shutdown options. All right, so we're going to click on next here. And then if you want to make this more than once, uh, you could schedule a backup. You could add some retention rules for full differential and incremental and so on. So we're not going to schedule it. So we're just going to do a one-time backup here. So we'll click on Next. So this is the summary here. So click on Finish. All right, then you can name the backup definition as well. So we'll call this Image Backup. And then we'll choose to run this now. So we'll click OK. All right, so this is running here, so this will take a few minutes, so I'll pause the video and be back when it's done. All right, so the image backup is complete, so we'll close that. And now we'll do the other kind here for the backup and restore option here and show you that it works the same. All right, so I already have a folder here called Recovery Backup, so I'll call this file here. 
recovery backup image. Same options here for the scheduling and retention. So I'll call this recovery image. You don't have to save it as a definition file, but if you want to have something that you can refer to and use over and over again, uh, then you should do this. All right, so I'll pause the video again and let this complete. Okay, so now our recovery backup is complete. All right, so let's take a look at the files here. So if we go to the E drive to the backup folder, we have the image backup. So here's our image backup file. And here's our recovery backup right there. If we go to existing backups, you can see we have them here. Here's the image backup. And here's the recovery backup. And if you don't see your folders in the list here to see your actual image, you could right click folders to search and add to the list and then pick the folder that has your backups in and add it because I've noticed it doesn't find them all the time unless you do this. All right, so now we have our two backups made, the image backup and the restore backup. Then we also have our rescue media created. And then we also have our Windows boot menu created here. Okay, so now let's do a recovery, but before we do that, let me put a file on the desktop here. All right, so we made this after the backup, so this should not be here after we restore the image backup. Okay, so if you don't do the option to add the boot menu, you're going to have to change your boot order and then boot to your ISO file that you have on your flash drive. But since we have the boot menu created here, we could just do a restart. Okay, so you can see here we could go right into Windows or go into the system recovery. So like I said, this will happen every time you start your computer if you make that boot menu option, but you can remove it uh, from the program as well, which we'll do at the end here. But if you think you're only going to use this for emergencies, then you could create your bootable flash drive and then just change your boot order on your computer to boot to it, kind of like you would when you're installing Windows. All right, so let's go into the system recovery. Okay, so as you can see, it looks like the regular program. We have our tabs here for creating backups and our existing backups. And now that we have our folders here, we can see our recovery backup and our image backup. And then, like I said, too, you could right click folder to search if it doesn't show up here. Because if you click on browse, then you could actually mount one of your drives to actually view the files within it. So we'll, we'll check that out when we boot back into the uh, regular Windows mode here. But that's not to browse for recovery images here. That's just to browse the images itself. All right, so the easiest way to do is just pick the one you want. Let's just say we're going to do this image backup here. We'll right click on it, restore image. So it's going from the source to the destination, which will be the same because it's going from C drive to C drive here. You could have it verify the image before restoring just to make sure it's valid. And then copy the selected partitions when I click next. So you should obviously do all the partitions, which it will check by default. And then you could also erase the disk and partitions before doing so, but we're just going to overwrite them. So we'll click Next. And we still have our advanced options here for Rapid Delta Restore, SSD Trim for SSD drives. Verify the image if you want to do that. Replace the master boot record from the backup. So if you're having an issue with your MBR, then you could use this option to replace it. And then this is set to reboot when the operation is complete, but you could also just have it shut down. So that's fine. So we'll click on finish. 
So you have to check this box and click on continue telling you all target data will be overwritten. Okay, so once again, this will take several minutes. So it will reboot the computer when this is done and then we'll be back. Okay, so it has been restored. So we'll reboot after the countdown here. Okay, so you can see it went to this menu again, but now we need to click on Windows 11, and then we'll get rid of this menu once we go back into the Macrium software. Okay, so we're back in Windows. You can see that file is gone, telling us that we restored the backup that was created prior to creating that file. So let's go back into Macrium Reflect. Okay, so let's go back to other tasks and then create rescue media. And now we will remove that boot menu. So that way Windows will just start up normally without having to click on it. Let's check out our backups here. All right, so let's go to the same image backup here. We could right click on it and choose browse image. And then here are the partitions. Here's the C drive, so that's the one we want to look at. You could give it a drive letter that's not in use. Let's say Z. And there's an option to enable access to restricted folders. So click on OK. All right, so now you can see we have mounted that image as our Z drive. And then we could go in it and actually look at files and so on. And let's say we wanted this file here. We could copy to our desktop. like so. And then when you want to detach the image, there is no option on the right click menu for some reason, but if you go up to restore and then detach image, and you could select it and detach it, now it's detached. All right, so to summarize, you're going to need to go to other tasks, create rescue media, either create it on a DVD or an ISO file. And then if you use this option here, the Windows boot menu, with this option selected here, it will make that boot menu so you don't have to actually boot to your ISO file. But if you want to just burn an ISO file on a flash drive like you normally would to install Windows, you could do it that way. Then it needs to come here, create your backups using one of these options here. So if you want to get more information on the difference, you could check out their help and see the full details about that. And then when it comes to restoring, just boot the computer into the recovery mode, pick your backup and restore it. But one thing you got to keep in mind is that anything you have done on the computer, you know, adding programs or changing settings or adding files, all that will be wiped because it will be reverted back to the date and time of the image. So if you have any files on there that are new that you've created since that image, you might want to back them up separately before doing it. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you can download Macrium Reflect and then you can try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.